Hi friends, I'm Maria Milewara. Welcome to my channel. I just watched a video by the beautiful Joss uh, on her channel, Joss Jane, when she talks about fragrances and beauty as well. And she just recorded a video that I was like a fabulous idea. I think we should all do it as a beauty community, as a tag, like on all kinds of social media, maybe it written video or, or photo. So Joss, hi Joss, happy new year, if you are watching. Um, she just made a video, top 10 fragrances that got me through 2020. It was a, such a heartfelt video and it just really resonated with me. I've been thinking about how to summarize how the years went and I've seen like the standard ones, the best fragrances of 2020 and this and this and that. It just doesn't quite land with me this year for some reason. So when I saw this, I thought, yes, yes. It's not even about the new releases of 2020. It's not about the best, whatever that means, fragrances of 2020. It's about the fragrances that carried me through fragrances that saved the day some of some of them here are super comfy you know kind of like cozy like pajamas that you wear as a scent some of these are oldies but goodies something that I've been carrying through with, with me through the years and some of these were new and they picked me up when I really needed it they surprised me they opened new avenues there's a whole family of fragrances that I op like discovered and really fell in love with last year so we're gonna talk about all of this Shall we start from something, something truly memorable for me? I mentioned this fragrance in many videos and <laughs> I'll do it again. It's a very hard to find rare flanker of Hermes Calash Eau Delicat. I wore it when I was in my 20s, completely used up the bottle. I remember when I bought it then, it made me think of something in my early childhood. I couldn't really point the finger at it and figure out what, what that was, but this light, very elegantly weaved floral that in my mind has very little in common with the original Kalash that is very aldehydic and kind of old school, like old French school of blending perfumes. This is kind of the flute of Kalash. This is such a thinly weaved, elegant, light floral that to me has an unmistakable Takeably like memorable aroma. I remembered it like over a dozen years later and I got lucky in 2020 one of the few things <laughs> That I can call myself lucky for in the past year that I got two bottles I found two bottles on Mercari of Kalesha Eau Delicat and I bought and bought myself both of them I basically cleared the market while I could I wore it extensively every time when I needed to go to a happy place and at the same time kind of feel like I, I can hide in the best of my memories and the best memories of self, if it makes any sense. Um, I wore Kalash Eau Delicat, just so happy to feel reunited with it and it's a very personal idiosyncratic love for me so I can't even recommend it to you I'm not sure if it's worth the investment because there are a lot of beautiful light florals out in, especially in the niche market so I don't know but to me it was extra extra special actually a similar story but a very different price point widely available a surprise blind buy that just was so refreshing and charming it was when I was moving. I moved from California to Florida in the middle of the first wave of like strict quarantines. It was nerve-wracking. A lot of things were not going my way. I <laughs> I spent over three or two months without my belongings and at some point started freaking out that I will never recover my things from California. Uh, the moving companies, there's like a lot of objective objective reasons why it was not happening, I'm not blaming anyone, but it was it was a bit, the uncertainty of it and the nervousness of it, it was a bit tough. So that was the point when I broke my no-buy. 
which was going strong for about six months, half a year. And man, I think a lot of us share the same <laughs> story here. It's just, I don't know what the economists are complaining about. I don't know about others, but I, I spent a lot of my coin. I invested a lot in the United States economy when the quarantine started. I don't know, like what are they ta talking about when they say the retail prices fell? Ev me and everybody I know started buying whatever they were into in troves. Like, it was crazy. Isn't that true? I bought so many perfumes last spring and summer and beyond and every single person I know of, people were going nuts sitting at home and people were just shopping online all the time. So one of the cheapest buy, blonde buys that I had during that early period of spring was this, Abusan Histoire d'Amour. It apparently is, is made here in Florida and this is a slightly soapy green fougère floral. I never thought that something that came that costed about 10 15 dollars could come in such an intricate and kind of beautiful again for its price bottle it's it's a distinctive design for sure um and would s be so distinct and wearable in the best sense in the same time there are myriads of light florals on the market and an affordable market as well if you really want to burn your money you can go to jo malone for the same options but largely the, the two, three note type of fragrances are everywhere. Zara has them, H&M has them, like you name it has them. So this is one of those, but oddly enough, this is something I could imagine Jo Malone could pump on the market when they were doing their wild, wild flowers or wild grass collection. The one that had the most bizarre uh, names of uh, of herbs you know like something like a botany lesson it could be there it's actually very recognizable and super easy to wear I enjoyed it so much that I got myself a double of the shower gel and body lotion of the same fragrance I often use it at the display at the vanity table because you know it's cheap and it kind of looks cute every time I wear it I just feel happy and I feel hopeful in the in kind of this like you know this echo of hope that it's gonna be okay you're gonna be okay it's gonna be fine and this is what I started to associate with this fragrance the time of change in the in in the in that time when so many things can and go wrong when you still maintain hope that the spring will come and then there will be summer and then there will be fall and you will be fine love it for that and again you can bathe yourself in it it's a very light beautiful floral it's again i love it so much because for its price is beautifully packaged and the scent is not cliche believe it or not another cult favorite in my personal collection in my olfactory library is a russian niche brand called brokar what i call a russian jo malone and 10 times cheaper. They do have all these kind of experimental lines of fragrances, the, the conceptual ones they come up with, and almost in every single one there will be something that is just simple but interesting, easy to wear yet distinctive, and this this is no exception. This is Franca Ferretti uh, line and the perfume is called Siesta. The packaging is kind of really cheap not gonna lie but this if you are lucky enough to be able to have access to <laughs> the Russian stores this will cost you like five ten dollars obviously much more expensive abroad purely because of the logistical issues but man if you can put your hands on some of the brocard fragrances they are the cheapest fun olfactory experiments you can indulge yourself with without any you know buyer's guilt buyer's remorse so siesta delightful sweet white florals kind of like um, 
abstract white florals. I can't say what here dominates the, the situation. It's very similar to how the jasmine that grows on in my backyard, how that smells. So it's this sweet, soft, non-bitter, non-fresh, just like sweet, creamy, soft gardenia slash jasmine that is also wrapped with some of the orange kind of mandarin oil in it. It's just such a crowd pleaser. And oddly enough, it reminds me of Aqua di Parma Quinoto di Liguria, though that one is a little bit more substantial, has more depth and has a little bit more structure. This is just yummy, 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 yummy. So, you heard it here first. Brocard, try to find it in Eastern or Western Europe. I think they do have representation somewhere in England, like probably in London, but for the price, really great stuff and fun stuff to sample. And Holligan's Lavandula. This is where, I, where my thoughts were going wild and I needed something that pulls my mind together yet still soothes me. The driest high elevation lavender I've ever smelled and the top one lavender in my collection. I have a video, since then I made a whole video about my lavender fragrances, if you're curious, all, all kinds of, of how you can play off of lavender accord and perfumery and what kind of effects it creates. You can watch it on my channel. I'll leave you to it. This is just the top of the top. And again, it mostly depends on what kind of lavender you prefer. This dry, almost minty, Airy Lavender is the best, absolute best. I bought it, and again, also memorable because I got it from Pinhaligan's Boutique when I visited Scotland. It was in Edinburgh and, you know, very few of us had the privilege to travel since then. So every time I look at it, it's just, it's the sweet, bittersweet nostalgia, basically because I don't know when next time I will be able to visit Europe that I love so much. Okay, the next one was a very lucky save. This is Penhaligon's Levantium. This is herbaceous oudi floral. There are not many herbaceous floral ouds that I know of. There are citrusy ones, bergamotty ones, there are gourmand ones, there are many different kinds of ouds. When it comes to kind of dry herbaceous florals, I don't know a lot of oud fragrances. Moreover, this opens with oud and closes with flowers. Usually it's vice versa, right? Like it's, it's a other way around. So, Levantium, is a sneaky troublemaker. I bought it as a more upscale version of a Cross Sands by Replica, uh, the brand Mason Margiela, of the designer Martin Margiela. Um, and a Cross Sands is a sweeter type of wood. The Levantium it kind of mocks me with its sweetness from the bottle while I get just bitter dry flowers on my skin. It never really goes sweet as it promises when you just sniff it. And but the opening with the oud and the closing with the f dry florals is mesmerizing. So it was not agreeing with me. I was ready to declutter it to be completely honest several times. And then at some point, I said like, all right, I'm going to make a lavish, uh, what was it, 10, 10 mil decant. And I'm going to force myself to wear it until the decant is gone. I don't know why, <laughs> why I had such a torturous idea, but I did. I did so. And by the end of it, I loved it. I loved it. And now it's a very prized possession in my collection. It's a very unique profiling for those of you who like classical shippers, who like aromatic perfumes, who like fougeres, who like all of that kind of herbaceous, poisonous type of stuff. Talking of that, shippers and all of these poisonous, fougeric, uh, aromatics, herbaceous, green scents, 
that are slightly prickly, bitter, powdery, and, and all of the good stuff. I opened the world of classical and neoclassical shippers for myself in 2020. And that also coincided with this, the first summer that I had in Florida. Oh, the Floridian summers. I lived in North Carolina for a number of years and I thought like that should have prepared me for the Floridian summer. No. No, I did not believe it when people told me that it's unbearable. The summer in Florida is just the hell on earth. And I didn't believe them. I was like, mm, I lived in North Carolina. I visited South Carolina. I even visited North, North, Northern Florida once. You cannot surprise me much. And after all, I lived in California for a number of years too. What is it? Bring it on. Bring <laughs> and Florida did. Wow. Just wow. <sighs> Truly hell on earth. And minus the tropical rains because of the climate change that kept the flora and fauna alive, the past summer was brutal. Everything just burned. Everything burned. Trees burned, grass burned, flowers burned. Everything just was burned to, 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 the, to the hot sand and nothing else. And oddly enough, that was the time when I mostly spent time indoors for a number of reasons, including the climate and the pandemic. And I just needed something to keep me going. And shippers, with their complexity, unapologetic loudness sometimes, and their controversies, and their mm, lack of modernity, and yet at the same time some of them were almost too contemporary. These family of fragrances carried me through Floridian summer. So if you, I bought a shit ton, uh, but a few memorable ones that I actually fell in love with are the, as follows. Um, Laura Blue by Guerlain. I know, I know. Now I'm gonna get comments as this is not a shipper. Even experts still disagree if it is or it is not. It has a lot of components and a lot of the mm, facets to Laura Blue that bring it to shipper, but it is more of a herbaceous kind of powdery aromatic. But to me, shippers can go that way. And again, all of these distinctions are rather arbitrary and they were done just for the convenience of the marketing and sales departments. Just, you know, let's keep it 100. Let's keep it real. So I'll put it there. Lure Blue, Eau de Parfum. I got myself a refill because I heard the conspiracy theory that if you buy a refill, that you're more likely to get an older version before like 100,000 reformulations when a lot of classic Guerlain fragrances became teethless. For some people it's for the better because now they can wear them. For a lot of people who kind of prefer the old school French style of perfume blending, for them it is a tragedy. So, tragedy, sorry. <laughs> so. If you're still curious, I see a lot of these uh, refill bottles floating around. Incredibly melancholic, complex, deep, powdery, slightly bitter, herbaceous floral. A, a, a world in a bottle. That's what Lure Blue is. Um, and the fragrance that is neoclassical, kind of herbaceous, floral, I guess, this one is even less cheaper because it's more powdery. That takes it to a next level that I also discovered in 2020 is Histoire de Parfums Matahari. Uh, the short name is 1876. This is the year. I think of her birth. Oh, dedicated to infamous Javanese princess and spy of many governments. Matahari is just poisonous powder. It's both kind of bitter 
and sweet and soothing and disturbing at the same time. It made the, the list of my most addictive fragrances not the easiest to wear, but once you get into the world of Matahari, you it's impossible to pull out. You just you, you just don't want to smell anything else. You just want to stay there and just die there maybe. Amazing. And the most recent purchase from the same genre is a classical cla 80s classics. Estee Lauder Knowing. I've been kind of walking around classics by Estee Lauder for a long time because I was afraid of the, the punchy 80s vibe that everybody was describing online in the comments. But man, I'm so glad I picked it up. I've been looking for these sweeter, peachy, peachy, fruity kind of shipper. And I tried Misuko Eau de Parfum, I tried Misuko Eau de Toilette, no. I tried cheaper versions, Roomba by Tat Labidus, I think a number of those. Ivrez by Yves Saint Laurent, there are like many peachy shippers around. And oddly enough, this is the answer. The answer was rather simple it was there the whole time knowing but Estee Lauder again some people say it's not the same it, it's teethless it's not as deep it's not as complex as it used to be I'm not arguing with that but it's pretty powerful to my nose <laughs> I mean I don't need it to be any more powerful than it is I'm perfectly happy it's bright it's both zesty yet fruity sweet it's just in the best way possible. It's like a power suit. Pretty cool stuff. I'm so happy with it. I'm so happy I have such a nice diverse selections of shippers in my collection where I actually started kind of counting Levantium as one of them. Anything that you know that mixes dry herbaceous maybe with citrusy or powdery accents anything dry herbaceous florals I kind of put into the shipper category if they have woody patchouli and mossy base in them now to things that are a little bit mm, sweeter heavier and maybe even super complex a fragrance that I think I finished several travel sprays first before I bought the full-size bottle. Come to our South Pacific rum and tabac. Uh. Come to our South Pacific is known for its vanilla bases where they add another flavor, vanilla cocoa, vanilla apricot, vanilla banana, which I actually have and like many many other options then they started kind of branching uh doing not necessarily seasonal but kind of like mood based shorter smaller lines of fragrances so this is one of those um more of a darker more of a boozy kind of gourmands it makes me think of both desserts that are vanilla based and some of the more like a bourbon like you know old-fashioned like maybe sweeter type of Manhattan like cocktails easy to wear super comfortable oddly enough works well both in morning daytime and evening it's it's like a warm fuzzy blanket in many ways but it's not too pinky cozy or fluffy it still maintains kind of a richer sweeter slightly more boozy flavor to it and it's it's just prohibition area in a bottle in a way you know what oddly enough it is somewhat it's not a clone but it's somewhat reminiscent of jaws club by replica which I haven't decant and, and some of my wish list, but this kind of also does the same trick. And this is like this was an all-time favorite that I wore so much that now I'm actually putting it on the back side of my uh, olfactory library because I need to, you know, I need to give it a bit of a rest. I wore it to death. This is a new hot kid in town by the same brand. Come to our South Pacific Eau de Lagons. 
this is so bizarre and so trendy at the same time salty oceanic marine like almost swampy type of fragrances are all the rage it started in 2020 i anticipate it's gonna come into the full force in 2021 maybe 2022 at least that's my forecast got this for almost like 18 dollars from the canadian site fragrance by that canada if i'm not mistaken i think they still have it it's it's nothing. This is like a really cheap price for come to our South Pacific. The usual price is around 40, 50 dollars per bottle. 20 bucks, it's nothing. So the story here might seem bizarre to you, but it's again, it's oddly addictive. So imagine a pound cake with a lot of whipped cream maybe even strawberries like this, this it's just covered with sweet creams and like all kinds of fruits maybe and whatnot maybe even some chocolate take that huge fluffy beautiful sweet oozing vanilla scent cake and start pushing it into a swamp because this fragrance is both oceanic, somewhat salty, swampy, but it maintains a sweet vanilla gourmand heart and base. It is so mind-blowingly bizarre, but so fun. Every time, as soon as I got it, and I got it in 2020, every time I put it, put it on, I mean, this is just nuts, but I guess, in the surrounding world it makes sense we're all drowning why don't we why don't we drown and have our cake at the same time it makes perfect sense in 2020 all the lagons come to our south pacific is just so fucked up just like my life was um okay and then super old favorite a magical fantastic world that every once in a while I just need to escape to is L'Heure de Fendu, The Seventh Hour by Cartier. Cartier has a boutique line called Ours, Lures. I hope I'm saying it correctly. Uh, where all the fragrances have numbers. And basically the concept is that they made a fragrance to match every hour of the day. They came out in different years. They are very different fragrances. There's like, it's not the kind of line where you have the same base and they just swap the flavors. Like, I don't know, I don't know like Maison Lancôme or a lot of boutique lines, kind of exclusive lines. They try to maintain a certain common theme and just like play with facets. This is a very different story. Each fragrance in the Hours by Cartier has an incredibly different story to tell. This was a random blind buy of a small vial. It was weird. I fell in love with it. And since then, I think I spent over a year just hunting the bottle down and eventually I got it. I used up several travel vials, like four for mil. And I'm slowly but surely working my way through the bottle itself. This is a very powerful, deep chocolate, like dark chocolate patchouli scent. This is the only patchouli scent that I've tried that actually gives me the dark chocolate facet. Most of the time, even if it's claimed in the pyramid, if, if there is a chocolate patchouli, I don't get any chocolate. Here I do get it and it's delicious. It is not the milky, frothy kind of chocolate. It's nothing to, that relates you to syrups and Starbucks. This is a, like a highest concentration of chocolate, somewhat bitter, with a little bit of sweet kitchen spices, such as cardamom, cinnamon, and like all that other good stuff. It's, to me, beside the point of notes, this is me escaping and sitting in the common room of uh, Hogwarts library or like a common room in one of the houses it's just incredible it gives me the vibes of a well heated like library in a castle so it's really hot and you smell both the leather chairs and the wood panels and the old books 
and you just had your dinner and you maybe you're taking hot cocoa before like while you're reading a book or maybe you'll also add a little bit of cognac whiskey into that cocoa and at the same time if you move away from the fireplace you know there is a little bit of like a cool draft going through the stone walls maybe there is like a little bit moss or kind of wetness that is seeping through the windows of you know of your Scottish castle if you wish it's just such a transformative experience this fragrance takes me to a different place and at times I really needed that and I did the job as I did before for years love it love it love it super special very unique fragrance not for everyone but if you're into that kind of story and you are not afraid of deep dark chocolate patchouli scents try it you can you can still find smaller vials on ebay and different places and believe me it's very potent you only need one spray for for most people that will be enough okay and now to a, a few other uh, purchases that were of that kind of nature deeper darker for interesting facets things that distracted me not necessarily distracted me they pulled me away from pointless worries and and to be honest excessively reading news at the times when there's nothing i could do about what was happening in the country and in the world bote fumero by carnet barcelona <sighs> this is a old almost like pagan church to me like pagan orthodox christian church as a lot of people know christianity when it came to different countries it kind of adapted a lot of the local religions and in uh, russia a lot of the churches for centuries they kept building them uh, from the wood and it was like a rather new trend to start building them from stone and like co covering everything with gold and yada 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 it is more like an imperial um an Im imperial era but the actual you know the grassroots christianity as was happening in the north of russia is like these teeny tiny wooden wooden houses if you wish just with the tall um the tall ceiling that would cram so many people especially in winter and there was almost like you couldn't breathe there and there were so many candles and so much incense i don't really get the heavy candle scent here but i get the incense and the wood it's the woodiest incense that i've ever smelled in my life and it's beautifully done i wouldn't call this necess necessarily spicy it's the incense here almost goes toward certain sourness or dried fruits like i often mis mistaken when i get a certain gourmand notes and there is incense in there as well to me it smells as dried fruits like turkish apricots maybe f dried figs and, and you know dry, dried prunes maybe things like that things of that nature this in a way gives me that kind of sweetness of dried fruits of incense and lots of warm wood. Botafumero, it's a very floating fragrance, a very, like it has a lot of silage. It's kind of, it runs away from you. It fills the space as soon as you apply it for the first time. And therefore you have to be careful with it. It's super long lasting. It will last not only till you wash your clothing, it might last beyond the wash, so. If you love wood and incense, this is something to hunt down. I know that you can find it for affordable price in online discount stores and secondhand. If you can't, well, if you can, you can buy a decant. You can split a bottle with me. I'm selling a decant of that as well. <laughs> Shameless plug. Uh, but otherwise, beautiful. And again, very transformative. Well, this, some of you who've been with me for a while, I've heard that story. It was too much. I'll come back for more. Marquise de Sade. 1740 by Histoire de Parfums. 
I know it's marketing. I'm sure if I smelled it and was wrapped in some other story, in some other packaging, and it was not called Marquise de Sade, I'm sure maybe I wouldn't have so much fun that it should be illegal. I had fun with this fragrance. I, I mean, <laughs> whoa. This is basically a the end of a lavish feast that is slowly turning into an orgy. And here's a fun thing, fun fact. I was told by a few people, well, you know, this is like, you can praise it all you want, but nobody can actually wear Marquise de Sade. Like, let's get real. This is not true. I took a sample of this for a blind tasting in the circle of friends and a person who has nothing to do with perfumes I mean she just wants to smell nice and when I gave this to her like out of everything that was there and I took like a very diverse sample of like affordable fragrances like eat crowd pleasers staples of designer market a lot of variety of niche a more classical niche a more like experimental niche and things of that kind she chose this one she didn't know what that was but she smelled as like this is me this is what I want to smell like so when we don't attach all these labels to a, an olfactory experience, we are way more adventurous than we think we are. We are way more open-minded and we are way more unusual and special and maybe a little perverted than we think we could be. I don't know what to tell you. A Todd Lieber Naranja Archive 69 were blindly picked by someone and they are also devoted to the, <laughs> the Bible of sex. Uh, Marquise de Sade was picked blindly over a lot of crowd pleasers, what you know is a best sellers on the market. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, don't, <laughs> don't knock it before you try it. It was fun. And the last one is my first a very precious bottle by House of Matriarch. I've been salivating, circling around the House of Matriarch. It's just the prices are a little bit prohibitive. And I just didn't know how quite how to approach their lineup, but I, I was secretly dying to try something from them. And I got Madrona by House of Matriarch secondhand from Mercari. I was so happy. At this point, Again, just being candid here, uh, I didn't care. <laughs> I didn't care what the fragrance was. I just wanted to have one house of Matriarch in my collection. I, I just, it was like, it was just a craving. I needed to know what the, this, this whole thing is about. So the Madrona is salty oceanic vetiver fragrance. To me, before, like, before I read this description, I thought it was a nutty gourmand. And I still do think so. I mean, since then, I started kind of reflecting and meditating on the scent, and I found the salty oceanic opening facets. I found the vetiver oil. I found all of the all of the things that are actually there. But my first impression still kind of dominates the experience. The vetiver oil in here has kind of sweet nutty paste, almost Nutella type of facet to it. And to me, this is a gourmand vetiver. And the certain freshness, so to speak, that is brought in by the oceanic notes, to me is not really freshness, but rather it makes me, it makes it almost like a salt, salt, I don't want to say caramel because it doesn't smell of caramel, but you know, like this kind of like salty dessert which is still a gourmand in my mind. It's not fresh in my mind. It's just salty, nutty gourmand. Beautiful stuff, super potent. You, know, I only need at max two sprays, at max. Lasts a long time, a powerhouse of a fragrance, very unique. As often happens with artisanal partout perfumery, probably not for everyone, and as far as I know, with House of Matriarch, every once in a while they make fragrances that the ingredients for which are very are they have in limited quantity, and then you buy it, you got it. 
if you don't buy it it's gone forever and this is what allows them to use super high quality seasonal ingredients that you know like the vetiver oil of that year from that supplier that only was produced in like that many tons and they bought like i don't know so many kilograms of it so maybe i'm fooling myself but i kind of feel like i i get it you know like i i feel all of that all of that uniqueness scarcity richness and individuality that the house of matriarch is all about this is it there were probably dozens of fragrances that entered my collection in the 2020 and it doesn't mean that i enjoy them any less or more but when you really ask yourself a very simple but heartfelt question what were the fragrances that carried the day that that saved you from the world and sometimes from your own self this is it this is the this is my set i'm i'm really curious to hear which fragrances helped you go through the past year please share them in the comments below if you're a blogger i would be super happy if you picked up uh, the uh, the torch here Joss has made a great video about it please let's go watch it together I'll see you there in the comments please like and subscribe my, to, to my channel if you haven't yet and I'll see you in the next video